Hello everyone, this is Iwan again. Uh, I am going to be showing you a video of another object I shot recently with the little uh, astrograph, the 600mm f3 telescope. Um, it is a narrow band target that I shot over uh, about six or seven nights and I am trying to also make a mosaic out of it. I have some drafts but I'm not 100% happy with the mosaic yet. This is the Tadpole Poles Nebula or IC410. It is um, up in the sky most of the night right now. It's an object that kind of is easy to shoot. It's pretty high up. It moves across my sky um, from sunset to almost sunrise. So I have a lot of time to image it. I wanted to use the Bicardi Hunters because I wanted to collect a lot of data relatively fast. This is about 17 hours of, of uh, data, about uh, six hours of hydrogen, five hours of oxygen, and five hours of sulfur. Now, this is uh, my second image that I use, the famous by now tool called Blood Exterminator from Russell Crowman. Does wonders if you know how to use it, and let's take a look at what that looks like. So, um, the telescope I used is this, this little Opicina Stellare RH200. It is a astrograph in the true sense. It's not really used for visual. It is specifically made for deep space photography, and it is a very, very good little telescope. Um, now, the data itself looks really clean. The hydrogen looks relatively um, clean. There's enough data. I can see the tadpoles. This is why this nebula is called the tadpoles because of these two little guys. I have imaged this in the past with a larger telescope and it turned out okay. I did not have enough data. So the hydrogen data is okay. The sulfur data is actually also really good. The stars are round. I'm really happy with it. And as you can see, as you go to the corners of the frame, the stars are round, which is a shock to a lot of people with this telescope and this camera. It is not easy, but it is achievable if you work hard and have um, a lot of time on your hands and patience. The last channel is oxygen. Again, noisy, weird, but relatively um, good to work with. I've seen worse. Uh, oxygen data. This was actually um, a surprisingly good amount of oxygen is this is in this part of the sky. It's not a lot, but enough so that it can show the blue. There's also a cluster here. I don't know what cluster this is. There's a little nebula uh, towards uh, the top right, and there's another really small planetary nebula towards the top left, and some other really interesting formations I would like to shoot with bigger telescopes in the uh, in the future. So this is the data. Now let's see what the stacks look like. I did a stack of SHO standard. I didn't do any luminance upper hydrogen. I just did that. It looks really good. The noise is there, but that's astrophotography for you. Um, the detail is great. I used the blood exterminator on the raw linear data. Um, I actually didn't know that you should use it on linear data and I tried it and it was amazing. So it's a deconvolution tool, a star reduction tool. It's really good. I cannot say enough great things about this. It makes our lives a lot easier. And the fact that it uses artificial intelligence just makes it continuously get better. So the stacks are here. The data is really good. The noise levels are really, really low, which I'm really surprised. But again, it's an F3 telescope. Uh, camera is very sensitive, so it's pretty much a given. Now, as per usual, I removed the stars and I started working on the nebulosity. Now, there were some weird, awkward stars that the algorithm star exterminator couldn't remove, but that's fine. It usually happens like that. The smaller the telescope, the more the stars, the more chances the algorithm could not remove all of them. I stretched it. I did some high dynamic range transformations just to kind of get uh the details back into the tadpole area uh, and also this little nebula at the top i did some uh, curve stretching so i can see more of the data and then i was ready to do some color mixing now i did a bit of color mixing in photoshop i did a few other things in there if you watch my video from telescope express from earlier in the month you'll see what 
I do with color mixing and how do I do it in Photoshop. If you want the scripts, ask me and I can email them to you. I'm not really protective of that stuff. It's I'm pretty open to helping people achieve great images. So after I did the color mixing, I came back into PixInsight and I did two more things and the image was done. This is the beauty of having great, great tools. It's not a lot of work. So this is the final image with stars and I think the details are really good. I'm really, really happy with the tadpole area for an eight inch, 600 millimeter telescope. The details are actually really impressive. You can see the glow, the oxygen glow around the both tadpoles. You can actually see the tadpoles really well. The stars look good. And even the starless image is really good. I am really pleased with it. I will kind of have to do RGB stars. I'm starting to do that more and more. And I'm trying to find the best way to do RGB stars, be that binned or unbinned. In my next uh, few targets, you'll probably end up seeing RGB stars instead of narrowband stars. That means I'm gonna image the star field with red and green and blue filters and only pass those along to the, to the image that has the nebulosity. So it would be this image here with red, green, and blue broadband stars. Uh, that takes a little bit longer. Some people do an hour per filter. I am probably gonna do 20 minutes binned, two by two, pulling back the resolution. I think that should be enough, but it remains to be seen. I think this might be the first target and my next target will be the one I'm going to be testing this out with. Um, I am doing a lot of uh, videos with uh, with the astrograph because my I'm trying to test the telescope for a friend, a large ACF-14, and that took a while to get ready. It took a while to get um, everything working, and it is 2,800 millimeters focal length. I have got it working. I have some data, and hopefully by the year's end, I will have an image. I'm excited to show you guys what 14 inches of aperture can actually do, and how to even use some of these SET telescopes that are amazing for planetary, but very, very poorly designed for deep space on, uh, deep space imaging for full frame cameras, which is what I use. So this is the Tadpoles Nebula. I think it's, it's beautiful. I think the details speak for itself. Um, I will do another, sh uh, I have data for the, um, panel that goes to the right, which feeds into the flaming nebula. So I might have to get more data there, but I will also talk about mosaics in a coming video. That's not a simple task, but it is something that people need to learn and understand how to mosaic, how to think about mosaics, how to think about the overlap, how to actually blend those mosaics together. There's a couple of tricks that will help um, get you to do mosaic a lot easier, but this is the Tadpoles Nebula. I wanted to do a quick video and show you uh, guys what it looks like. If you like my work, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment. And if you have feedback or questions, I'm here to help and see you in the next video.